Gemini, Sam Terrell, the Northwest Aeronaut. Welcome back. And today we are talking about stalls. Yes, stalls. Power off stalls. Power on stalls. Churning stalls. We're going to do stalls of all sorts today. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are intimidated by stalls when they first start flight training. I was one of those people. You can go back and see the video of my very first solo. Well, my second very first solo once I started flying again back in 2019. Uh, and I was doing some stalls and I got myself a little bit into an incipient spin. There we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that was a little bit of a spin. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, it was a, a little nerve wracking. But uh, ultimately, once you do them enough, you, you realize they're really not that bad and uh, they're actually kind of fun. So we're gonna have some fun with stalls today. I've just done my clearing turns. I've done my pre-maneuver checklist of uh, shell, my shell checklist, okay? And uh, we're going to start just with a power off stall. Now, power off stall, a lot of people seem to just neglect the fact that the ACS calls for you to establish a descent. You can't just do it straight from level flight. You have to establish a descent in the landing configuration at your approach speed. So in our plane, it's 70 miles an hour. I'm gonna go ahead and slow us down. Carby coming out, power coming back, putting my flaps in. Again, I'm feeling the energy in the airplane. I'm, not, I'm looking outside, feeling the energy in the airplane, maintaining altitude, 30 degrees of flaps. All right, bringing my power back in to 2100 RPM. I'm aiming, right now I'm just getting into slow flight at 50 in my altitude back and slow flight at 50 in order to uh, the recipe for that is 2100 rpm and one full turn of trim nose down and that will keep me at 50 in slow flight in a Cessna 150 okay power off stalls we are going to establish a descent so when we do this the way I like to do it is identify an altitude that you are going to use as your fake runway so for me, it's going to be 3,300. When I get to 3,300, that's my runway. I'm going to round out just like I'm coming into land. And I'm just going to hold it off, hold it off, hold it off, hold it off, hold it off until the stall is induced. Then we do our recovery and I'm going to talk through it here. All right, here we go. I'm going to start a descent. Carbeat's coming out, power's coming back. I'm pitching for 70 as we come down. And we'll do it on this heading, whichever one I'm on right now. There we go, I got it bugged. Got clouds ahead of me, I'm using as a visual reference. Okay, here we go, 3,300 coming down at 70. A little bit fast, there we are. Even the lines outside, there's 3,300 leveling off, power coming to idle. Now I want to acknowledge the signs of the stall. So, there's a stall horn, sloppy controls, there's the buffet and the brake. Nose forward, right rudder, power in, nose to the horizon, flaps up to 20 degrees immediately. Those flaps have to come up immediately to get rid of the drag so that you can get airspeed. Then once you have your airspeed and a positive rate of climb, you bring the flaps up to 10 degrees and then finally flaps up the rest of the way. Continue your climb out at your VX or VY speed as required. Okay, that's your power off stall folks. Let's go ahead and jump into a power on stall. So of course the power off stall is simulating an approach to landing stall. Our power on stall is simulating just the opposite, a departure stall. Now, the other mistake that people make with power on stalls is they just go straight into them from a cruise of 100 miles an hour or 100 knots, and they're just shooting up like a rocket while it's taking forever to bleed that airspeed off. So, while I do my clearing turns here, what we want to do with the power on stall, we don't start our takeoff at 100 miles an hour or 100 knots. We started at rotation speed, basically. So we want to slow the airplane down to rotation speed. This plane, it'll be about 60 miles an hour. And then once we get there, we'll go full power, pitch up, and we'll hold it. Okay, we're going to be doing a full power, power on stall. But of course, power on stalls can be uh, done at various power settings and are often more realistic to practice at a lower power setting. Because power on stalls don't happen when you're pitched up at 30 degrees on climb out. Nobody does that. Power on stalls happen when you are overloaded on a hot day, 
not getting the performance you want, you're pitched up maybe 10 or 15 degrees, and there's trees or terrain coming at you, and you're not getting the climb rate that you think you should have. So what do you do is you see these trees coming closer to you, you start pitching up more and more and more, maybe only to 15, 20 degrees, and you're hitting a stall. So I'm gonna show you both ways, one with full power, uh, and then one with partial power to simulate that more realistic situation of a power on stall with a lower nose attitude than normal. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna do this power on stall. I'm gonna do it on this heading, whatever one I'm bugging here, 317 or so. All right, so I'm gonna slow us down to our rotation speed. Slowing us down to 60. West Coast is here, Rochester, now 566 Mike, 3 nautical miles south from Bank 2200, simulate emergency. All right, here we go, slowing down to 60. Full power, power on stall, here we go. 60, bringing the power in, pitching up. Keeping that coordination, keeping the wings level. Acknowledging the signs. There's the stall horn, and the buffet, and there's the brake, nose down. Just like that. That's all there is to it. Now, remember, our number one priority, number one priority with all stalls is to break that critical angle of attack. You must get the nose down. And the biggest mistake I see from people, my students, or, or people that I'm giving mock check rides to, is they just are so lackadaisical or so laid back or even non-existent um, in getting that nose down. You have to get that nose down. I usually teach get it down just slightly below the horizon and then up to the horizon because we don't want to be diving at the ground. But we want to get it down just slightly below and then to the horizon to get your airspeed up before you pitch up. Okay, here we go. We're going to do the partial power on stall. And you're going to see it doesn't require much nose up. This is a more realistic situation. So here we go. I'm going to slow us down to our rotation speed. I'm on my heading here. And I'm only bringing the power in about 50%. Not that much at all. Here we go. Carpet in and power up. Pitching up. Look at that. I'm only 15 degrees, 17 degrees nose up. The stall warning going off. I'm holding it. I'm just not getting the climb I want. I don't know what's going on. I hear the stall horn. I hear the buffet. There's the brake. Nose down. Now you can't bring more power in because remember we're simulating that we have full power. We're just not getting the performance we want. So I'm keeping the power where it is. And I'm just allowing the airplane to get the airspeed up there before I pitch up and start climbing out. All right, so that's a more realistic way to simulate it. All right, one last power on stall. Uh, we are gonna do a turning stall. Now turning stalls tend to get overlooked in a lot of private pilot training or even commercial pilot training. But they are fair game on the check ride, folks. Your examiner could ask you to show them a turning stall. And they're really quite simple. They're actually, in some respects, even easier than straight ahead stalls because the airplane tends to want to correct itself when it stalls. It tends to want to drop the high wing, which just brings you to wings level. That is assuming you are maintaining coordination. As long as you are coordinated, it should break evenly straight ahead. No problem. If you're not coordinated, that's when you can get in trouble, but of course that, that applies to any stall. If you're not coordinated, that's when you get in trouble and of course puts you at risk for a spin. And so what we're gonna do to do this turning stall is we're just going to do a power on stall like we usually do. This is simulating like the crosswind turn. You depart the runway, you're turning crosswind, your nose is getting higher than you think it is, and all of a sudden you hear that stall warning and uh, and you get the stall. All right, so I'm just going to do a power on stall. As we pitch up, I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna have about 10 degrees of bank. You don't want a lot of bank. Only 10 to 15 degrees tops is all you really need. And you're just gonna hold it, holding coordination. And the rest is just like a regular power on stall. All right, here we go. I don't see anyone to the left. That's the direction I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna slow us down to our rotation speed. All right, 60 coming in. I'm gonna put that bank in, start turning while we induce the stall. Here's 60, car beats in, bringing that power in, 10 degrees of bank. There's the bank. I'm turning on crosswind, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm stalling. There's the stall warning. 
and there's the buffet, and there's the break. Look at that. My right wing went down. So it's self-corrected. As long as you maintain co coordination, it should break straight ahead and self-correct. Let's try one to the right. Here we go, I'm gonna slow us down. Area's still clear. Blowing us down to rotation speed. I'm gonna do a turn to the right. This is gonna require more right rudder than the last one did. There we go, there's 60 carbines in. Right turn, right rudder, full power. Doing that right crosswind turn, holding that right rudder. There's the stall warning, and there's the stall, look at that. Left wing falls, and it just self-corrects. Very simple, guys. So that's your power on stalls at full power, at partial power, and turning stalls, okay? Thanks for joining me today, guys. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. And until next time, resume your own navigation.